and welcome back to another video here with angel b designs i'm angel b thank you so much for watching if you are new here welcome if you're not welcome back um today is going to be another design only uh tutorial in canva what we are going to be talking about today is i've gotten a lot of questions about my etsy thumbnails um i do use canva to design my etsy thumbnails um, and it makes it super, super simple. And you can do this in the free version. So you do not need the pro version. I mean, unless you just want to use certain elements, but you do not need the pro version to do this. Okay. Um, so the first thing I want to do is go over to Etsy and I kind of want to show you guys how to view the qualifications for an Etsy thumbnail or a picture or how to get the best resolution. Okay. So for starters, when you go to um, create a listing here, right here where it says photos and video, there's a question mark. If you hover over it, it'll give you the photo requirements. Okay. So they need you to use a JPEG, a GIF, or a PNG. They recommend that the size is 2000 pixels on the shorter side and a resolution of 72 PPI. For me, I always design it 3,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels um, just because that gives really good resolution, really good quality. I don't have any issues with anything being cut off or anything like that, but it does give you, and then it has the videos um, qualifications here as well. So for starters, you want to go to Etsy. If you're unsure of what to what size to make it. They have a recommended size here. However, me personally, like I said, if you design in 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels, you'll have no issues and you'll get a perfect thumbnail every time. So I'm going to go over here to custom size, wherever, you know, you can go to creative design, you can go to custom size, whatever the case is on your page. I'm going to leave the units in pixels and I'm just going to type 3000 under width and I'm going to type 3000 under height. And then I'm going to go to create a new design. That's going to give me a perfect square canvas here. Okay, now the good thing about Canva is that you can upload an SVG, a JPEG, um, a PNG, and you can use it on your thumbnail. Okay, so I'm going to go to uploads. I'm and this is for a digital download. I'm going to show you how to do it two times. One would be if you are uploading a digital download. One would be if you are trying, and this is um this is just for the thumbnail. I'm not going to show you how to create the Etsy listing. I'm just going to show you how to create the thumbnail, okay? So the first thumbnail would be for like a digital download. The sec second thumbnail I'm going to show you is going to be if you're selling a physical product and you have a picture, okay? So the first one we're doing right now is the digital download. So I'm going to go to upload files and I'm just going to grab an SVG file here. So this is an SVG file that I created in Silhouette Studio. Um, I'm sorry, I created, I created it in Leonardo Design Studio. Um, it has a transparent background already because this is the file, the, this, this is the actual file that you would receive if you purchase this from my Etsy shop. So this is the actual SVG that you would receive if you purchased it from my Etsy shop. It has a transparent background and it's already set to be downloaded and cut out, okay? Um, I just uploaded that right onto my canvas here. And as long as it is squared within this 3000 pixel by 3000 pixel canvas, I don't have to crop edit none of those things. Okay. So um, what I like to do for my SVG files is I go to the text box and I'm going to add a little text box here. What I like to do, so you have the, the file here. Um, I like to just kind of put that it is an SVG cut file and it's compatible with all vinyl cutters okay that just gives them a little piece of information right on the um 
the thumbnail when they're scrolling, you know, if they're searching for something, when they're scrolling, the first thing they see is the thumbnails. They may not necessarily see the title first, but the first thing that they probably will see, especially if they're scrolling on their phone, is the thumbnail. So you want to put a little bit of information on the thumbnail so that they can kind of see it. So they can see the file. It's nice. It's big. It's bold. It's bright. And then I did put what it is. It's an SVG cut file, and it is compatible with all vinyl cutters. Um, if you wanted to leave it just like this, you could, you can change the color of the background. Obviously you would have to change the color of the text, um, or you can do a gradient. Or if you don't like these gradients, sometimes what I do is I will add in kind of my own gradient. So I go over to elements and in the search bar, I'm going to type in gradients. And then I'm going to go to graphics and see all. There's one particular one that I always use, which is this one right here. It is called, and it's a free gradient. So it's called gradient that fades to transparency is the name of this element. And it is free for all users, whether you have the pro or the free version. This is the one that I like to use because you can change the color of it. So what I do is I just bring this onto the canvas and I drag it out all the way. I'm going to obviously position this to the back, but I just kind I always liked how that kind of looked. Um, and then you can also change the color of the purple. So you can do black, you can do red, you can do pink, you know, you can change the color. So this is how I kind of get my thumbnails. Now, when it comes to SVGs or PNG files, I do suggest watermarking um, watermarking your thumbnails. What some people like to do, and it's not right, but they do it, they will screenshot a thumbnail, try to remove the background, and then use the file as a PNG without actually purchasing it. So if you have a logo, or even if you don't, I'll show you how to do it if you don't have a logo. If you have like a logo already for your business, you can just add it to the top and bring down the transparency. If you do not have a logo, you what you can do is you can take a text box. Okay, I just have a regular text box here. Type in the name of your business. So I'm going to type in Angel B Designs. You can choose whatever font you want. I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to bring the line spacing up just a little bit. And I'm going to make this the length of the file. Now, to kind of watermark it so that you can still see the design without seeing the name, we're going to go to this little checkerboard here. This is the transparency. And you're going to bring it way down. So as you can see, you can still see the file. But if you were to screenshot that, you would get my name on top of it. It, it would look like some shadow. I also, I'm going to duplicate this. I also add it to the background. So I'm going to go to position, backward. I also add it to the background. So again, if they try to screenshot it and remove the background, it's going to be so jumbled up that the background remover may not be able to get rid of it. Okay, so definitely make sure you're adding a watermark. Again, you can do the same thing if you just have a logo. Just add the logo to the page here and then um, uh, bring down the transparency, okay? Super simple, super easy. I definitely suggest this if you are... Um, Uploading files, digital files is super easy to create. Everything I used um, is available in the free version. So you can make this exact same thumbnail in the free version, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to do it for rhinestones. It's pretty much the same if you do any rhinestone templates. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of this. I'm gonna go to uploads and I'm gonna bring in a rhinestone file. And this is the same file, but in the rhinestones. 
So now what I do for rhinestones, the only difference is you don't necessarily have to watermark it. It would be very, very hard for them to cut out this rhinestone template if they screenshot it. I'm going to go ahead and say it's impossible. They could be, they could use it as a PNG, but I can't see anybody being able to cut this template if they were to just screenshot it. The only thing I change here is I will put the file size. So the file size was, let me write it down. It was 11.514. By 4.335. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'll type in the file size 11.514 wide by 4.335 high. So I put that information right on the thumbnail. So if somebody is looking for a specific size, it'll say it right there on the thumbnail. Okay, and that's all I do. I download it as a PNG and upload it right into Canva. And you can actually, you don't even have to save it to your computer. If you were to share this, you would just go to download. I don't even bring the resolution all the way up. I don't do any of those things. I literally just download it just like this. Download it as a PNG, no transparent background, none of that, because it's just a thumbnail. You can go right over to Etsy and right where it says drag or drop, you would just bring that, drag and drop it right into Etsy. And there's your thumbnail. It fits perfectly. Nothing is cut off. I'm going to go ahead and click it. It fit perfectly. Nothing is cut off. You don't have to do anything else to it. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and show you if you are going to be uploading a physical product and you took a picture of it, okay? Um, you can. I would also suggest, I'm just going to add a page. So I'm still designing in the 3,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. If you try to upload from your phone, you may run into some issues where you cropped it too much or um, it didn't have good lighting, so you weren't able to edit it. Um, there's just issues that, that can arise if you upload it straight from your phone. You can, if it's been working for you, perfect. But um, what I used to do when I was selling physical products is I would take the picture on my phone, I would upload it to Canva, and then I would drag basically the picture into a 3000 pixel by 3000 pixel canvas here. That way, when I go to take it to Etsy, I know the resolution is high. If I need to brighten it up a little bit, I can do that in Canva. Um, but I know that the, the cropping of it is going to be correct. That way, when I upload it into Etsy, um, the Etsy thumbnail part of Etsy, the Etsy listing, I know that it's going to be the correct size and nothing of my image is going to be cut off. Okay, so what I would suggest, you take your picture and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to upload that picture into Canva. I got to scroll down like a lot to get to some of my older work where I was actually taking pictures of it. Now, I will say when you are taking pictures of your work, try to make sure that you have really good lighting. So something like this, I used to take my pictures outside. Um, this is a picture here. You would just upload it. What I would do is right click, set image as background. So now the image is covering the full background. If you wanted to edit it, you would just select the picture, go up to edit, go over to adjust. You can auto adjust the whole image. And as you can see, it really just kind of crisp that up a little bit. So now this is a perfect photo. All I would need to do now, if you want to add text, you can. Um, you can add the text to the description box and just have the picture. That's totally up to you. I'm just kind of showing you how to upload the picture into Canva and then drag it into your 3000 pixel by 3000 pixel canvas. And then maybe just doing a quick auto adjust to make sure it's nice and bright. Um, and then we're going to go to share. We're going to go to download regular PNG. We're not going to touch anything. We're just going to download page two.
And then we're going to go to our Etsy listing here and we can just drag and drop that photo right into Etsy. And there's our thumbnail, okay? Nothing is cropped out. They can see the entire product. Um, it's nice, it's bright, it's vibrant, it's attractive. It's, you know, I would click on that. You want photos that are bright. So if um, when you're taking the picture, again, try to make sure you have as much natural light as you can possibly get. If you, if the, the inside of your house maybe or office or wherever you're crafting, it doesn't have a whole lot of natural light, take your product outside, like in the middle of the day, 12, between 12 and two o'clock when it's really bright. Um, even if it's cloudy outside, that's fine. You just want some natural lighting. Take your picture outside, um, kind of like how I did here, um, and then upload it into Canva and do the auto adjust and let it just go ahead and brighten that up. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple. That's how I do my photos. Again, this one was taking on taken on the inside. But again, if you just want to, I did use a ring light. Um, so if you have a ring light or even if you have two phones, right? Turn on the flashlight. Turn on the flashlight on, like hold two phones, right? Take a picture on one phone. Don't turn on the flash on your actual phone. I've noticed that whenever I use the flash on the actual phone I'm taking the picture with, it doesn't look that good. It looks better if you have two phones like this, right? Turn on the flash on this phone, but take the picture with this phone. Just use the light from the flashlight on this phone and then take the picture with this phone. You'll get, it'll be like a little makeshift ring light if you can do that, okay? Just trying to throw out some ideas here. But same thing, this one was taken on the inside, on, on the inside of my office using a ring light. We just set the image as a background. That looks, again, it looks light, it looks bright before I even edit it. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight. I'm gonna go ahead to edit, adjust, and I'm gonna auto adjust the picture. And that really just kind of crisp it up, okay? And you can even play with the settings if you want to. Nine times out of 10, I'll let Canva auto adjust it for me, but you can definitely go in and play with the settings yourself. Okay. I hope I was able to answer some questions, you guys. I hope I was able to give you some gems that you didn't have before, but that is all I have for this video, guys. Again, if you only have the uh, free version, you are able to do this as well. Um, but that is all I have for this video, guys. If there was a question I did not answer, please don't hesitate to drop it down below and I will either answer it in the comment section or I'll make a video for it. But that's all I have for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Until next time. Bye, guys.